Ms. Richman, this is your Integrated Mass 1 Unit 5.4 Lesson Summary. Unit 5.4 will be expanding upon what we did in Unit 5.3, which was transformations of functions, uh, specifically linear and exponential functions. Uh, today we're going to focus on the reflection uh, side of it as far as transformations go. So there's two types of uh, reflections we can do in math. We can reflect it over the y-axis, which is reflecting an image uh, from the left to the right or the right to the left. We call that a horizontal reflection because you're horizontally reflecting it. Uh, or we can do a vertical reflection, which would be reflecting it over the x-axis, taking an image, reflecting it from top to bottom, bottom to top, etc. So uh, to do a vertical reflection uh, of an image, we would take the function and function notation-wise, f of x equals 3 to the x, to make the reflection g of x, we basically just do a negative of the, of the entire function. So we throw a negative out in front of the main function. So for example, 3 to the x would become negative 3 to the x. So when you see a negative out in front of the main portion of the function, uh, in an exponential case in front of the base, or the term uh, in front there, uh, in a linear, and be out in front of the slope, um, it is going to do a vertical reflection. So what a vertical reflection will do is take all the y values and change their sign. But all the x values in your table will stay the same. So your y would change negative, your x could stay positive. Um, to show you what that looks like graphically, I'll first graph 3 dx uh, without a table, just doing it real quick in our head, getting an idea. And then we'll plug it into uh, the reflected version of the function and kind of compare them so you can see. So without doing the table for the new one, 3 to the negative 2 is uh, 1 ninth, because negative exponents flip it. Uh, 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. And 3 to the second is 9. So I get my standard looking exponential function with an asymptote at y equals 0. Now, Vertical reflection wise, throws a negative out front. Let's see what that does to the table values and verify that it does indeed do this. So 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth. Times a negative 1 makes it negative 1 ninth. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. Made negative is negative 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. Made negative is negative 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. Made negative is negative 3. 3 to the 2 is 9, made negative is negative 9. So uh, if I graph these points, negative 2 and 1 ninth, negative 1 and 1 third, 3 and 9, I get an exponential function again. Only this time is an exact reflection, vertically, of the original. This was 3 to the x. Negative 3 to the x is a vertical reflection over that axis of the same function. So there are some shortcuts there. If you do have a function and you want to just use the table for that original function and then just change all the signs, you can. Um, for, for most of the beginning ones you do in Integrated Math 1, it's probably better just to use your table for the new function. Um, or just use the transformations as a check there, but that kind of is up to you. Uh, as long as we're aware of the fact that it is a vertical reflection, we'll be good. So negative out front reflects it vertically. Um, let's check, take a look at horizontal. In a horizontal reflection, what's different is if you had f of x and you want to do a horizontal reflection, you're actually going to just change the sign of the inside x. So g of x becomes f of negative x. The same exact function only change the x to a negative. So that would become 2 to the negative x. So in vertical, the negative is outside the main function. In a horizontal, it's a negative is actually um, attached to the input variable x. So what that will do to our function is make all of your original table values flip-flop in the sense that the y's would stay positive, but your x's would stay negative to get those same y values. So if we were graphing by using an original table for 2 to the x and comparing it here, this is what it would do. But again, I think for ease, it's really easier just to go ahead and plug in your same table values that you would normally use into the new function. So let's graph the original function first, 2 to the x, and we'll go ahead and draw the table for that this time. 
So you can see negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. In for the original function, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, 2 to the 1 is 1, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4. So our original function would look like this. And we'd have our, again, our asymptote at y equals zero. So very similar to the three to the x1, only a little, little less steep incline. And if we graph the other one, we plot the points, okay? Negative two to the negative x power becomes positive two, which makes this four. Uh, two to the negative negative one, change it to a positive one, which makes it two. To the zero would still be one. Two to the negative one, one half. Two to the negative two, one fourth. And I can plot those just like that. But if you take a look at the table, comparing the tables, it does indeed do what it, we said it would here. Um, two, four became negative two, four. Two, four became negative two, four. And you can see that our tables pretty much upside down, backwards in comparison, but if you took each point and tried to find it here, it would follow that pattern. So negative two comma four. So one, two, three, four. Negative one comma two. Zero comma one. One comma one half. Two comma one fourth. Same asymptote. And as you can see, it is indeed a uh, horizontal reflection. It's reflecting over the y-axis, but the shape is reflecting horizontally. So the reflection is coming from the left to the right. And you can see because every point is matching up. And even where they're on the y-axis, the reflection line, the points stay where it was, which is what happens in reflections. So to summarize, throw a negative out in front of the main part of the function. It will do a Vertical reflection, move it up and up or down reflection wise. Um, if you change the x itself, the input variable to a negative, it will reflect it horizontally. Um, as far as helping you for graphing, it just gives you an idea of what it should look like. You can still always depend on the table to check and make sure your graph is correct. But by knowing reflections, you have a better idea of where it's going to be. And later on in future math classes, you can do quick graphs using it. All right, thank you.